Hello and welcome to Mrs. Law's class. In this lesson, I'm going to show you how to add and subtract polynomials. So let's begin with adding polynomials. To add, all we need to do is to combine the like terms. So recall how to simplify by combining like terms. So in this example here, we can see that we have a positive 17x squared and a negative 14x squared. These are like because they have the same variable raised to the same exponent. The coefficients are different, and that's what we're going to add or subtract. So we have 17 minus 14x squared, and that will give us 3x squared. Now let's look at our x's. So we have negative 2x, and we have a negative 5x. And again, these are like because they have a single variable x with the same exponent of 1. So negative 2x minus 5x is negative 7x. And then lastly, we have our single constant plus 8, which doesn't combine with anything. Now when we compare with this expression over here to the right, we have two polynomials. We know they're polynomials because there's brackets around each of the separate expressions. Now when we add the two expressions together, we are simply combining, again, the like terms. So same thing as before, our positive 17x squared, we're going to add, because it says add in the middle, negative 14x squared. So that's going to be 3x squared. And then we're going to combine the like terms, negative 2x, and we're still going to do that middle part here, which it says add. So actually, I'm going to highlight that. So we're going to go negative 2x plus negative 5x, and that's negative 7x. And then finally, I have positive 8, and there's nothing else to add, so it's just going to be plus 8. So we can see that when adding polynomials, you can simply remove the brackets and then add. Now, I recommend that maybe you might want to group the like terms together first to save some computational errors. So what I mean by that is, let's say we have the same expression here. And what we're going to do is we're going to take 17x squared. And we have a negative 14x squared. We're going to put those side by side because they are like. And then we have a negative 2x and a negative 5x. And those are like. And then we have plus 8. So what we're doing is we're going to combine these first two terms to give us 3x squared. Combine these two terms to give us negative 7x, and then we have our single constant at the end, plus 8. And that's one way to help you avoid um, having any computational errors, because maybe you might add or subtract incorrectly, but placing terms that are like side by side will eliminate that. All right, so let's try the next example like that. So we have 3x squared and plus negative 5x squared, and then we have a negative 7x plus an 8x, and then we have plus 8, and then we have a minus 9. So combining our like terms, which are now already grouped nicely together, we have 3x squared minus 5x squared is negative 2x squared, negative 7x plus 8x is plus x, and 8 minus 9 is negative 1. All right, we can try to do it without grouping them. So we have, but I'll circle them just to help us identify. So 5m squared plus 6m squared is 11m squared. And then we have negative 17m plus 13m, which is negative 4m. And then finally we have plus 2 and plus 4, which is plus 6. Now, you might not necessarily have gone into that order. You might have actually just started with the ones I've circled in red first, and then the ones in blue, and then the ones I've circled in black. Uh, it doesn't matter what the order is. And then what you want to do, though, after you've added them all up, is to make sure that you've written the terms in descending degree order. So here we have a power of 2 and a power of 1, and this one doesn't have a power at all because it doesn't have a variable. Now you can add the polynomials horizontally, like we've just had them set up like this, but you also can add them vertically. 
So when working vertically, make sure to line up the like terms and to simplify after. Now, if a term is missing from one of the polynomials and it doesn't have a match, leave a blank space so that you know that there's no match or no like term to add it up with. So here we go. We've had these two expressions. Everything's all lined up already. We can see x squares. We have our x's lined up in the middle term. And then we have our constant at the end. So here we're just going to add just straight down. We don't have to carry over anything because each of the terms are separate and only we can, sorry, we can only add like terms. So we have 6 plus 2, which is 8x squared. And then negative 10 plus 9 is negative 1x. And then negative 15 plus negative 3 is negative 18. You might like this way because everything's lined up nicely. So you can uh, check to see um, if you've added up correctly. Now in the second example here, we have our x squared. In our second column, we have our 24x. Notice there's nothing at the top and I've left a blank space so we don't accidentally add something. So for example, if you move the negative 15 over here, just so that to make it closer, you might accidentally add the negative 15 with the 24x when actually the negative 15 should be paired out with the negative 8. So let's add these again, like we just did. And 4 minus 7 is negative 3x squared plus 24x. And then negative 15 plus negative 8 is negative 23. And that's how you add polynomials. Now let's turn our attention to subtracting polynomials. So when subtracting polynomials, you must remember to add the opposite of every term in the second polynomial. So this is the same as multiplying by negative 1. Now do be careful because we are subtracting. So just to review, the opposite of a polynomial is taking all the signs in the polynomial and changing it to its opposite. So here is an expression um, where we take the opposite of negative 2xy, that would be positive 2xy, plus 3x squared is going to be now minus 3x squared. And then minus 5y squared, the opposite is plus 5y squared. All right, so the question I guess you might be asking is, why are we adding the opposite? So let's take a look at an example here. So in this example here, we have 2x squared, which is the first polynomial. And then we are subtracting the second polynomial. So I'm going to highlight this to remind us that we're subtracting. So when we subtract, remember that is actually the same as adding the opposite when we learned about integers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this expression without the brackets, just like how we did adding. We're going to put all the like terms together and also put it in descending to be ordered to help us um, easier so that when we do simplify, it's already done. All right, so we have positive 5x cubed and we have a positive 9x cubed. So we have 5x cubed, but remember we are subtracting. So it's going to now be minus 9x cubed. Okay, next we have 2x squared and we have a plus 3x squared. So we have a positive 2x squared, but we're subtracting, so it's going to be minus 3x squared. And then finally, we have a negative 16 and we have a 5. So it's going to be negative 16, and remember we are subtracting again because we've highlighted it, and so it's going to be minus 5. All right, so let's combine all our like terms. And again, we have this nicely grouped in pairs. So we have 5x cubed minus 9x cubed. That is going to be negative 4x cubed. 2x squared minus 3x squared is negative x squared. And then negative 16 minus 5 is negative 21. All right, let's do one more. So let's, again, let's regroup this. So we have m squared. And again, I'll highlight this to remind us it's minus. So then we have minus 6m squared. And then we have 2n, so plus 2n. And we can combine that with the other negative 2n. But remember, it's going to be minus and then negative 2n. And then we have a negative 5p. Oh, but there's no p in the second polynomial. But we do have a 1. Remember, we're going to minus. Because it's highlighted, everything in the second bracket will be minus. 
So it'll be minus one, so minus one. So remember this minus sign that's in front of the second polynomial applies to every term in the second polynomial. All right, let's combine our like terms together. So these two are like, and these two are like, and the other two are not like, they're unlike terms. So m squared minus six m squared is negative five m squared. 2n, so we have two positives, so we're gonna add. So we get plus 4n, and then we have the minus 5p and the minus one. Just like adding, we can also subtract polynomials vertically. So I've just shown you how to do this horizontally. So remember to line up the like terms and then remember to add the opposite, okay? Or you can just simply subtract if you remember. So let's subtract here. Let's put a minus sign to a minus. And remember, we're only subtracting like terms so we don't have to borrow anything. So we have 6x squared minus 2x squared. And that's 4x squared. Negative 10 minus 9. That's going to be negative 19x. And then I have negative 15 minus negative 3. Or you can think of it as negative 15 plus the opposite positive 3. So this will give us negative 12. All right, let's do the last one here. We're going to subtract. So we have 4x squared minus negative 7. Or we can think of this as 4x squared plus positive 7. So we have 11x squared. Now this is a tricky one here. So there's 24x. There's nothing above it. If you want to put something, we can think of this as 0x. So we have 0x or 0 minus 24. So that will give us negative 24x. And then lastly, negative 15 minus negative 8 is the same as negative 15 plus positive 8. And that's going to be negative 7. And that is how you subtract polynomials. All right, to finish off, let's do an application problem. So here we have um, the shape, conjugate shape, and I want you to find the perimeter. So here we have um, some missing sides, so we're gonna need to find that. So this side over here, which I'll highlight in red, is going to be this whole length x, but we need to take away two because it's two less. So this will be x minus two. Now this shorter side over here, which I'll mark in blue, is the whole length x, but we need to take away five because it's five shorter. So this little side is x minus five. All right, so to find the perimeter then, we just simply have to start in a corner and then add our way all around. So let's start down here in the bottom left and we'll go clockwise adding up all the side lengths. So we have five, and then plus x minus two, plus x minus five. At the top we have plus two, and then plus x, and then plus x. So the perimeter is going to then be, joining all our like terms, we have five minus two minus five, plus two actually, we have opposites of each number, so that's going to be zero. So we just have our x's. So one x plus another x plus another one, and finally a fourth one gives us a perimeter of four x. And that's how we do a perimeter question. And then we have a surface area question here, but I'll show you how to do surface area when we learn how to do multiplying polynomials.